What a week it's been, right? Has Holy it been crazy? Smokes. I, I don't feel, know. What to, I don't even know how to start. I'm so happy. I'm like I trying to book to a start. trip for this weekend. My wife's going crazy. Don't know where to go. Nothing's got like availability. This country put, is rocking, man. Like everywhere is rocking. My friend just came back from Vegas. He said like he couldn't even stay in the hotel ever again because everybody was like elbow to elbow and shoulder to shoulder was packed. I'm leaving for Vegas tonight. That's probably uh, not what I'm hoping to see. It is. Well, I don't know. I mean, on Thursday it might not be so busy, but over the weekend, it'll probably get pretty crazy again. And it's like the last weekend for all of us Canadians before. Like, I go there every year. I go again. there every year for this time. It's the uh, Jiu Jitsu World Championship. So I go every year. I don't ever win. Just so you guys never. This is, the, this is the year you're winning. You're year. on a winning streak. I'm on a winning streak. But um, every year, everyone says the same thing. It's the um, uh, long weekend. It's so busy. Da, 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 da. And when I go there, I mean, it's really you know no different. It's, it seems like a pretty ordinary time. But I don't do anything fun. So just so you guys know, I just go there and I sit in my hotel. I prepare for the competition. I eat nice a really big much. meal with my friends. And then I fly home. Last year, I, I drove a Lamborghini because I had some time to kill, which was a big waste of money, just so you guys know, in case you were interested. My uh, one of my investors from the last deal on Kingston Road just bought himself a Lamborghini, a nice shiny blue one. That's what happens when people invest in your deals. They this is what happens. Jeez. Yeah. Right? Now we got a new one, TK. We went firm this week. Holy we went firm, baby. Cow. Everybody's going to think I'm nuts, right? Like I talk Darryl like a, the Darryl world's Darryl ending and then I go and buy something. Daryl bought, a, Darryl bought, Darryl bought the confusing? best development property in the city. And it was almost like the people who were selling it had no idea what they had. No it was like idea. There was no clue. Like they were they were just sort of like, this is what it is. And we were like, yeah, yeah that's yeah, yeah. what it is. Yeah. And it was nowhere close to what they said it was. Well, it was 10 times better than what they said it was. It needed the assembly king to the come assembly in, king's eyes wave my scepter, right? My magic yeah. scepter. L look, the, the the crazy thing is, is that it, you and I were you just brought it to me on the show, and yes, the minute, innocently. but the minute I saw it, I was like, "This is a grand slam and a half," and yeah. I didn't know what you were allowed to do on it, right? I just yeah. looked at it and I was like, I saw the building. I, I knew it, right? Yeah. Because I, of the other stuff that we've been working on lately and all the new policies with the city. Like there's that, a lot. It's not sure. It's not just, it's just that one property. Right? It's all the experience lately. It's the experience yeah. lately and what's yeah. going on lately and being in tune and just being ready to pounce. I mean, yeah, uh, you know, s some companies, they have to put it through a, a bunch of um, analysts, right? Like a floor yeah, of yeah, people yeah. have to go through the deal. People before who don't you really care if the deal the makes trigger. money or not. They're just getting their salary. Well, they don't know. And like, this is the process in the company because it's a big yeah. company and this is just how it works. Right. But like you brought it to me and I was like, let's make an offer now. Every week, Daryl, it's like, like me, like me, please subscribe. Please. Comments. Yeah. Look, we don't really care that much. You need your attention. Making any money from a YouTube channel, but it would help us no. reach more people so that more people can see our show. So maybe you just subscribe, like, drop a comment. A little bit we of appreciate it. the button. The next guy who finds our video appreciates it. Don't be so selfish. Don't forget about the clips channel. Just in case we're way too annoying, like for an hour, you can't listen to us for an hour straight. Clips channel, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Apple. leaving reviews on Apple Podcasts. That would be a good idea. A, like every one of our reviews is garbage on there. So come on, if you really like us, go to Apple Podcasts Jeez. and leave a positive review. We appreciate it. Like by now, it's kind of ridiculous that you haven't kind of offended DK if people haven't like what is this? easily offended please subscribe and well yeah like now and so so I mean it doesn't always work out that 
you 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 make progress with the idea you had initially. But Most of the time, it doesn't work out. Well, it's for me, truth. that's actually not the truth because if Most you of the look time, at not offers, sorry. What I mean is going deals. and looking at a deal. Yeah. Most of the time, it's not going to Most of work. them are garbage. You've anyway. analyzed hundreds of deals to get to this one really good one. It's not like it was just like you looked at three deals and you picked the best of three. But how does a guy like this brought... guy get so lucky and get this yeah. deal, man? Because, oh, my God. Probably like, like 50% undervalued, I would say. I, 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 uh, like, like as is, as is, that would be cool. Oh, 50%. Yeah. 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 I would agree as, with as that. is without as actually is doing 50% any work. for sure. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Then we, after all the work is done, it's even, it's even a better deal. And, and it's kind of like the last one where I was just constantly in the due diligence period, waiting for something really bad to, to come out of the woodwork. Yeah. Actually it kind of did. Right. We got some bad news. We got that rental replacement news. The rental that replacement was, stuff was like, yeah, but that confusing. killed it for everybody else that owned this it, deal because I, everybody I, else had the number of rental units equaled the total number of units, and so that definitely is not going to work out that way. Well, what's amazing is that the assembly king didn't have to put together an assembly this time. Are you a real estate agent and you're looking to make a change? Anywhere in Ontario, guess what? We're hiring. Franklin & Associates, number one team in the GTA for all REMAX teams. Number one team for all teams from all companies for number of units sold uh, throughout Toronto. So if you're looking to make a change, best decision I ever made was to join Franklin & Associates. Go to jointeamleo.com and we can set up a call. It was yeah. pre-assembled. It's unique. It was pre-assembled. Well, but you know what's not unique? What? Very rarely do you work on a site that people haven't put together at one point and let it fall true, apart true, true. or pay too yeah, much yeah, for yeah. and it disintegrated or, you know, like you're never the first person really that called somebody unless you're like doing assemblies in Milton or something that you might be, you know, hitting some fresh meat out there. But if yeah. you're working in the GTA or in Toronto specifically, in or like forget about okay so yeah okay. it's in forest hill forest hill daryl all the developers in live hill, in forest though. hill but not like, only is it in forest it, hill it's in the village man it's in yeah. the village like you can pee yeah. not that you'd want to pee on the village from like your balcony but technically you could do it because it's that yeah. close yeah and so but does everybody understand how good it is apparently not but it's not they weren't good... willing to do the work. So what, what happened, Daryl, and I told you this already, is everybody else would have looked at the property and would have said, well, if this happens, then that happens, and yada, yada, yada. You knew that you had a short leash. You had, you had 60 days to be able to get all the info. You organized meetings with every bloody bureaucrat down at the city who's involved in this approval process miraculously overnight. You had an unwavering support from the community. So you had all these people who were like really motivated. We had, uh, what are they called again? Yimbies. We had Yimby. Yimbies supporting it. And you had, and all the people in the city already knew that this was a project that needed to happen and that they needed someone to figure it out. So you were able to get meetings done in that time that normally would have never happened. Yeah. And no one was able to go firm without those meetings. And that's why you were able to put the deal together this way. Because when you it's were calling me, it was one second, it was you were meeting with, the city solicitor, and then you were talking to the rental placement guy, and then you had another meeting with this lawyer and then this planner. And it was just like, it's only been three days, Daryl. Slow down. Don't you have anything else to do? And well, you're but like, this no, is the I thing. Don't. No, I don't actually. Priority. Yeah. Like <laughs> I have 60 days to figure this out. Everything yeah. else can wait, but that's how it's yeah. got to be. I think we lost your audio again there. No, I can. I'm good. Yeah. There it's back. Um, yeah. So, so, and again, like I don't have a floor of analysts that have to go through everything in order to like, you know, make a meeting with somebody at the city, which is, which is really super, which nice. is a big time saver. And that's, those are the reasons why this deal happened. And now you got, um, uh, like an investment, uh, opportunity. So I'm putting my money in. I think it's a great, uh, project. Like it's like instant built in equity. The second I, I put my money into it, it means I'm, I'm already up. You got some guaranteed returns. You got uh, broker options. If there's an agent who wants to bring in a buyer uh, to or an investor or a buyer for one of the units and wants to yeah. free free subscribe, I don't know it's an interesting deal we put together. If yeah. and I hate to even do this, but uh, I mean I, I really haven't done anything on this show ever for my benefit other than amuse people. So if you're interested at all, you want to check out the deck. 
click the link below. This Ooh, we is got a link below. But this is literally the best property, and this will never yeah. happen again. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I've looked at the map. You cannot recreate this opportunity. Like, I it's agree. impossible. And it's the placement of it in the area yeah. that makes it super unique and able to do what I am going to do on it. T. Yeah. Hey, let's go. And what's what's best about the whole thing? And for everybody, this whole channel is that it, it's me and TK did it this together. Is in-house, okay, this is in house. It deal happened here. on the show, although I edited it out for selfish reasons. But yeah. like, it literally has all kind of transpired through the show in one way or another. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's pretty damn cool, man. I think that's pretty cool because it's been like a long time and a lot of people saying like, what are you wasting your time on with that fucking YouTube <laughs> that show time, that you're making, right? uh, you know, not even covering your costs. You every doing? Single yeah, you're YouTube losing income. money. You look like an idiot. We're, and we're, well, uh, We made up for it. Yeah, I think uh, that was well, well, well worth the juice was worth the squeeze. Absolutely. I think so. But uh now Ooh, the hard part. The now, now the real work starts, right? Now we gotta get this thing through sure. the uh, city. But uh, you got everything in place already, so you know, it's just a matter let's of let's go, baby. Yeah. And and so and far, you've done this like before, so it's not like this is your first rodeo. No, and just just so everybody's clear, like most of the money is already accounted for. There's some heavy hitters on board behind this thing, and uh, yeah. it is just super exciting. And I'll post a rendering somewhere just so you can see how cool it is. Nice. Because it's gonna be cool. All right. What do we got? We got a we got a Good crazy guess. show. We got a great guest. If you've waited for this, we didn't even say that before. But this guest is relevant, like super relevant on so many levels. Let's bring him in because he's been waiting a little while. I, I think all of our guests are relevant, but that's okay. You know, just... no, but this guy's like super relevant in my eyes because he's got yeah. a crazy TikTok video that's gone banana viral. TikTok. And we've talked about this scenario numerous scenario numerous times there he is ryan welcome to the show so so i was just telling tk like we've talked about the the uber realtor scenario numerous times on this show but you actually uber consumer uber like you buyer, did it. uber everything yeah you did it you pulled it off and you yeah. and you admitted it on a a social media platform to boot praised for it praised for yeah. it you welcome ryan nice to meet you yeah, nice. I'm so happy that you guys can hear me good. Yeah, yeah. pretty good. Nice yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, I'm so happy to be here. I'm um, thanks. Thanks for the invite. Um, yeah, no where are you from, Ryan? What do you do? Let our guests know that way. Yeah. Uh, get a good introduction here. Yeah, yeah. my name is Ryan Smith. Um, I'm from Winnipeg, Manitoba. And, we uh, love we love Manitoba, by the way. Nice. Sometimes nice. people tell us that we ignore that little province in this between Ontario and another one proof it and exists wanted to make sure that they know that we love Manitoba exactly yeah I, that's I, awesome I noticed I that the yeah. background's blurred out so we're not totally sure that Manitoba exists but anyways go <laughs> ahead yeah that's it's in my uh, condo here so mm -hmm. um yeah so basically what I when I was doing this is uh, I just it took me about a year just over a year and like three months or so I finally got my license I was studying that whole time working side jobs. I was working for my buddy's foundation company. I was doing 12 hour labor job. Like I was doing everything I could, right. Basically studying in the evening, studying before I go to work, all that. Finally winter came and foundation work slowed right down. So then I thought, you know what? I still need the flexibility to be able to, cause I had a couple investment deals on the go and stuff. So I, I still need flexibility to go see what's going on and, you know, do stuff with my daughter and this and that. So I thought, you know what? I need a delivery job. <laughs> Right. And that's why I looked up Uber Eats and I seen that. And so I just jumped right into it and I just kept studying for my license while I was driving. And then finally, about three, four weeks ago, I finally got my license, got my cards, did all that. And I thought I'm bringing stuff right to people's doors. So why not just put my card on it? <laughs> So what what you were doing is you were putting your business card in a little note that shared with people who you were and how you yeah. can help them. And you were, you were able to, you know, reach people in a way that, you know, is, is creative. Now, hold on a second. It's Ryan. called cross promotion. Cross promotion here. But hold on. You were willing to make sacrifices to reach your goals. Is that what you're trying to tell us? Yes. And that, that would be a whole oh. show. I'm telling you. 
Yeah, well, we got a whole show, so here we go. <laughs> yeah, we sacrifices to reach somebody your goal. making it's a sacrifice. Unbelievable that I'm hearing this for the first time. I thought everything was just you know needed to be a handout, Roses. and everyone should just use you know the government as an excuse to why they can't make it. But you yeah, didn't seem I'm, to get the message. No, I didn't get the message. Um, I was uh, like I said, I was working twelve hours a day, found in concrete and hauling like just everything I could, um, very manual labor work, and then from there. You know, I, like I said, I said, I just need something. So I went Uber Eats and I'm in the mind frame, man, where I'm like, I don't care what other people think. Like I'm going after. How old are you? How old are you? I'm 47. 47. Where were you born? In Manitoba? I was, well, I was originally born in uh, Ontario, Fort Ontario. Francis, Ontario. Where the hell um, is that? I've heard of it. <laughs> it's right on the, it's right on the uh, border of International Falls, Minnesota. It's like right on the state's border. Um, like, that well, exists that we are on yeah. the border of Minnesota somewhere. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> this is, yeah, I was, I used We're to from walk Toronto. Right, okay, all right, I used to walk right across the bridge. And I'm in the states to, in okay. Minnesota, International Falls, Minnesota. Yeah, Daryl's gonna look at a map later. What the fuck? Okay, yeah. so okay, you're born in Ontario. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, you've grown up though, in, and then around Manitoba. 12 years old, yeah, we moved to Manitoba, and ever since then, we moved on to a farm out here in Manitoba. And right from then, 12 years old, yeah, right till now, 47, I've still been here. So, um, why I was did you not from... leave? Why did what was well, it that he... kept you in Manitoba? Because I need to know why I think more people should move to Manitoba and they need to hear a positive, like, you know, this is why you stayed in Manitoba. Well, I would say at the beginning, right, I was just a kid, so I had no choice. Okay. Um, but as I got older, right, 18, got into my 20s, that type of thing. I just, all my family, friends, you know, like that I made while I was here from 12 till 20, whatever, right? All those friends and family and stuff were all just here in Manitoba. And we had, I had other family that were here anyways. Um, and so, yeah, so then I just, and now as I got older, as an adult, right? I just like the fact that the cost of living is so low, right? Throughout all the provinces, right? This is probably the lowest cost of living province out there. Um, I know it's right near the top. And I just like there's in the summers, it's had really nice summers. There's lots to do here. Um, and, and that's just the main thing that I like about Manitoba myself, um, just living here. And my whole family's here now, like I'm 47. So, I mean, my whole life's been here now. Right. So, but I, yeah, I, I think it's a great place to be. It's a great place to live. Uh, you're going to get a lot of people I know from other provinces, they're going to say, I would never live there. I'd never go to Manitoba, but they don't know what they're talking about, you know? They've never well, been there. They don't know. They've never even been to Manitoba. How do they right. know? Yeah. Right. Know. And new Canadians come in here too. They don't know what they're, they're just, their friend who lives in Toronto says this is the place to be or Vancouver. Be, yeah. But if they heard it from you, then it's like, okay, this guy's living a good life. He hasn't felt the need. You must've had friends leave Manitoba. Oh yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah. I had friends go to Alberta and working and uh, doing different things. Uh, BC, like I've had friends leave all over the place, but I've also had friends come here right yeah from Even where actually from actually from the some friends that i grew up in fort francis ontario was a kid they ended up coming to winnipeg yeah so that's yeah. a big town i guess right winnipeg would be the big town yeah it's like uh winnipeg's like uh what we got like nine hundred thousand people yeah like it's you know what i mean it's not the toronto's good. and Vancouver's, it's but i mean it's, it's a it's a good size city yeah What's now, what about top? real estate? Like yeah. real estate in, in in Winnipeg, you know, obviously that's something that, you know, yeah. you're now becoming professionally more familiar with, sure. but what's been your experience with real estate through your lifetime? You know, your family buying, selling, moving, like give us some insight into yeah. the Winnipeg real estate. Well, scene. I would say, well, I'll just tell you as it sits um, right now, we have the actual, the average price home right now is like 410,000, 415,000. What do you get for that? And you're going to, you know, you're going to get three bedroom, two, two bathroom base, you know, basement garage. Like you're going to get pretty much everything you need. Backyard. Um, yeah. Backyard. Um, and of course with everything, right. There's a, different areas and ups and downs when it comes to what you're getting, but overall that's a, it's a very good, it's not a, you know, very expensive place to live. What about before COVID? And before COVID? Yeah. yeah, that well, we, we we actually went through a major um, bang there where like we were getting prices were going through the roof. Yeah. So right. before COVID, what like, does what that look like? Price? Yeah. What does yeah, going we're, through we're the talking, roof look like there? Well, we're talking like we were going through 20, 20 to 25 offers on a house. 
like okay. multiple multiple bidding wars and it, it, the guys are paying a hundred thousand dollars over list were they from ontario no i don't know i think they were local they're just people all and i'm sure they were too from ontario but yeah. i just know that they were local this is before i was in real estate this is just kind of yeah i was you know think i was in the investment side because i used to flip houses for a couple of years tell us about that yeah That's so cool. i did that and I'll, I'll tell you right now it was it was 50 50 50 percent. i did good 50 percent burn same burn. here in ontario <laughs> <laughs> So, and then after what I did is I, that's when I started to think where, you know what, I need something. I, cause I was in sales for 10 years. I was, I did flipping. So I was in the real estate side for you know five, six years. And I figured, you know what, this is a good transition to being a realtor because sure. I mean, I we're built, in Canada. That sounds like the perfect transition to be, you know, a so I mean, yeah. like I, I basically, I'm really good at building relationships and that type of thing. So I thought, you know what? I think I'm going to start to get my license. I'm going to study to get my license Smart. and transition into that. But yeah, we went through a big, like I said, there was a big explosion there where people were doing 80,000 over hundred thousand over. Um, and then that went away. And now, and that's interest rates were a huge part of that too, right? That yeah. was 2.5% and all that really the low. And now I'm writing into people now that are saying, Oh, I want to wait till it goes back to two. Really? Like who gives a shit at that price point? Does I'm, it really affect the decision? Like what's the mortgage? What are people taking out as a mortgage? Are they doing 75% loan to value mortgages or is it more like yeah. 50%? Well, 75 to 80 is still, is still normal. Still normal. So Jesus. What about but incomes you, though, Manitoba? Like, you know, what, what does a nurse make? What does a teacher make? What does a police officer make? What does yeah, a construction worker make? Yeah, well, that's the thing. I don't know exactly, you know, the amounts, but I just know like that um, construct. Yeah, construction is huge here, right? Um, so I mean, they make they make decent money, um, but when it comes to like, um, shouldn't it stuff? be the same? Like, shouldn't you like if I'm a nurse and I'm going to go work at a hospital paid for by the province, I should make pretty close to the same amount in Manitoba as I do in Ontario or BC. Yeah, or yeah, a police it's officer, just, like it should yeah. like. Maybe it's off by probably works like ten percent, you know, something like that. If you're a federal employee, like your Canada Post or something right, like that, right. it's the exact same. Right. The provincial yeah, and, type of civic duty stuff. It's right. And so I mean, for for people to be able to to buy a house, you know, to buy a house for four hundred, four hundred three to four hundred thousand, like it, you're making the good wage to be able to do that. Yeah. But what I found though, Ryan, I've been, I've been selling real estate for a while. And so I, I have all these different like time frames of the market going up and down mm -hmm. buyers when they buy never once has a buyer ever said, man, I can't believe that they're selling this place for so cheap <laughs> sellers buyers when they're selling their property. I, we just never said like, that for two man, months, I, man, I, man, I can't believe that this buyer is willing to pay so much for my property. Right. You know? Yeah. It's, it's always buyers are miserable about the price they're paying. Sellers are always miserable about the price they're getting. It's just the way it goes. Yes. You, just, you just have to navigate the system and everything else. So interest rates are never low enough. Uh, prices mm -hmm. are never low enough for buyers. It's just part of the the, the deal. So right yeah. now, if you were to get somebody a 2% interest rate, right? They'd, yeah. find, they'd find another problem. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they'd find another problem. And what I try and eat like pretty simple. What I try and explain to them too is, they say, I want, you know, I'm waiting for it to go back down to what it was before. And I say, well, are you also, you know, waiting for 25 other offers to be on the table? Nice. Because, I mean, it's you know what I mean? Scare yeah, yeah. Good, good, well, good because, training in your first month of real estate. That's right. <laughs> Somebody trained you well. Scare the shit out of them to make an offer. It's perfect. Well, well that's kind what's going to happen, though, right? Okay, hold on a second. Hold on about a 25 second. offers. If you wait till the offers come back, then you're going to yeah. complain about the offers again. And then they'll they'll move the target this way. So hold on a sec. Let's back up a sec. Okay. You're the Uber realtor now. Okay. Yeah. So is this a shtick? Like, is this a life choice? Is it working? Have you got a listing out of it? Have you got a buyer yeah. representation? Tell us, how okay. is it working for you? So my whole goal was not to be the Uber realtor. Okay. That it would be good. Like if you were in Sweden, you'd be like the coolest guy ever. He's the Uber realtor. He's so <laughs> Uber. This guy's Mr. No. Uber realtor. I was right. just basically, you know what? I'm I have to do what I gotta do to get my first few clients and get some listings. So and I gotta pay the bills. So like, so I mean I have to drive while I'm doing this. I have to do deliveries. 
And so that's why I thought, well, hey, I'm doing this for 10 hours a day. You know, I'm splitting the time between trying to show, because I'm working with two clients right now, trying to find them a house. And so I thought, you know, I have to still do showings, but I still have to drive Uber to pay my bills. So I thought that's why I thought of that. that when I was doing that, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to attach my cars to all these orders, uh, see if anything happens. And out of, I'll just say the one thing that did happen is I handed it to someone in person. Like, so it was a uh, one on the instructions. It says meet at the door. So I'm actually handing the food to them. And so I thought, well, I'm not going to just staple my thing. I'm just going to talk to them in person, face to face and hand them my card. So then when I go there, this, this woman comes to the door and I hand her the food and I said, Hey, you wouldn't mind if I just give you my business card. I said, you know what? I'm actually, a re I just got my real estate license three weeks ago. And I said, I'm trying to meet new people and get my name out there. And she's just so happy. And she's like, yeah, no problem. Takes my card. And she says, do you know, I, I actually work at a property management company. Oh my God. <laughs> Do you see in Toronto, it would be, I think, a different experience for both parties. But this is so. what let him finish. Let him yeah. finish. Yeah, no, what so happened with that lady? That, that's, so, that's then, yeah, so then she gives me the uh, she's all let me go get my card. She gets her property management card, gives it to me. She said, I we work with realtors. Um, she goes, and I told her, I said, I used to be on the investment side, so I know a lot of investors for rental properties and this and that. So we exchange cards, and now you know, she's we got her information, and now her and I are communicating back and forth. Um, when stuff comes up about, and that was, you know, and that was just from that's crazy doing, doing this. So now right. you need to, you need to maybe not listen to the instructions. When people say, just leave it on the doorstep, you need to knock on the door and be like, Oh, I didn't realize. I don't know if you're allowed to, just... to do that. You're probably not allowed to get <laughs> Uber. Gotta do his business. Is this legal? Like, is Uber? Yeah, I have no idea. You have no idea. Hold like, on, do you on. have a is lawsuit Uber Eats, coming? Is Uber Eats going to see our chance? show and fire you? <laughs> and you know what? I, I had a lot of people on that video, right? And they're saying the same thing. They're like, oh, you wait till Uber. It's funny. They say, you wait till Uber sees this and you get fired. And then they tag, they tag at Uber. Yeah, <laughs> Uber. Uh, Uber Eats doesn't care. You know how do they care? This is a promotion, man. Responsible people. Exactly. To you just got them half a million views, Uber. Yeah. yeah, I said, you know what? I said, if when they contact me, customer yeah. send them the bill, bro. Then we'll see. Yeah, tell send them, to them buy the a bill. house. Yeah, tell Uber to buy a house too. Exactly. So it's crazy, but hold on a it's sec. A good why? Start, but... Can I ask a question? Sure. And I'm being like, uh, I don't want to be a dick or anything, but why does a 47 year old in Manitoba need to work uh, three jobs to be exactly. able to pay the bills now? What's going on? Well, the, I'm, I'm working Uber Eats is to pay the bills. That's it. Right. And so, so the rest is just like right spare now. time. Okay, good. Because it's like, it doesn't time, sound like the, the... First of all, I don't know what spare time is. Okay. Right. No spare I, time. I go, I work 10 to 12 hours driving for Uber. And the other hours in the morning, I do a couple hours when I get up. Real estate, I look for my, I'm looking for houses for my clients kind of doing that. And then I'm in the, I'm in my car all day. I go till midnight and then yeah. I come home, I have a shower, I eat, I go to bed and I start the whole thing. I do it six days a week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got a so daughter, I, you're providing for her. You got a daughter. Uh, you're a hardworking and, man. That's it. You know what I mean? And so, and I'm, tell, I'm telling everybody that's around me in my life, right? I'm telling them, this is what I got to do to get to where I need to get to. Yeah. And I'm going to get there. I know I'll be a successful realtor. Everything's going to be great. I'm going to do my thing. I said, I, if I have to drive Uber Eats and do 10, 12 hours a day, I really don't care. How yeah. much can you make in a day with Uber Eats out of curiosity? Like 150, 200 bucks. That's clear? That's, and then you're paying like- And you pay bucks. tax on top of that? At the end, at the end of the year, you have to. Yeah. Is that a corporation? You put it, like, how does that work? No, Do you get it just goes to me, but then I have personally, to- Personally, and then you got to pay income tax? And then I have to pay the taxes at the end, yeah. Yeah. But he's doing real estate deals. He's going to be doing. You oh, need yeah. to, don't listen to Daryl. Okay. First I'm, not, all, I'm asking secret, questions. I'm not making any statements. to real estate success when is the, consistency. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Tell over us, over and yeah. over and over again, doing the same things to drive traffic, to be able to meet new people, to mm -hmm. be there when your clients, they, you pick up the phone each time when they tell you that they need to do something, you go and do it and you get back to them right away. You just be consistent over and over and yeah. over again. You'll be successful in real estate. Everybody that I see who gets into real estate, who says they want to have all these great ideas and do all these wonderful things, does it amazingly for a month, three months, a year, whatever, but they don't stay consistent. Be do the they Uber, do it amazingly be, even for a month? Whatever. 
but they do <laughs> but be the uber oh. guy put the cards out there be known as the guy who's putting out his business cards, even if the customers aren't the ones calling you, you're going to get people who will see that you're hardworking and they'll appreciate that. And people are looking for that type of realtor, somebody who's going to be working all day long to make sure that they, uh, you know, find them the right property, you know, and maybe you eventually start to let people know you're only doing four hours a day at Uber Eats because you got so many bloody clients. Now you don't have time to be delivering uh, hamburgers. Right? Yeah. yeah, you're right. But, but these are the I things agree. that you got to totally do. Agree. Yeah. yeah, totally agree. Embrace I'm it. I, and that's the thing is, is, and that's always been my, my mindset, right. Is just, I do what I have to do. You know, people, hey, trust me, you, you know what it's like, you think about this, you're 47 years old, you're doing Uber Eats, you're trying to get your license, you get your license and you're walking in to deliver to someone and someone you went to high school with. Yeah. Yep. That's crazy. And man, in Winnipeg, that happens. Probably yeah. every other order, right? Yeah, I walk into I walked into a restaurant to actually. See, do that's what food. I'm saying. It's so different there. Okay, this is this makes some sense now because you probably know most of the people already, anyways, don't you? It's like a small place. Well, yeah, it's it's you run into you do run into a lot of people that you go through your life that you've met acquaintances and stuff like that, and and and, and that's exactly the situation where you walk in and you deliver something to their door and they open the door and they say, oh. Right. You know, my nickname in high school was Smitty, right? Smith. Smitty. So, so they, hey, hey, Smitty, what, hey, what are you doing, man? And I'm sitting there holding their uh, Santa Lucia pizza. You know, here you go. <laughs> oh, what's going on? You know, and right away you have that. And I'm beyond that now. Like, I'm just like, hey, dude, what's That's... going on? Here's your pizza. How's, how's life treating you, buddy? Da, 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 da. You got kids. Awesome. I'm a realtor man now here. Here's my That's car. a superpower. You know that I love to it. be able. Yeah. Like that is a yeah. superpower to get through. That is, and not give a fuck. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, years ago I said, I don't give a fuck. That's the best I'm, place I'm, to I'm be like, on yeah. earth, man. There's, yeah. there's a lot of people that we're dealing with right now where they are uh, struggling. So they already own their home. Okay. They yeah. already own their home. They're there right now. And interest rates have gone up. Most of them because they were on a variable mortgage. Okay. Right. They need to get a job at Uber Eats. Got they it. need to take on an extra six hours of work every day mm -hmm. after their full-time job in order to be able to pay the bills. They're not doing it. There were moments where I thought because about it. They're they're worried about that conversation with the person that they're going to run into who might they, they might know and they don't want to be embarrassed or whatever. Right. And what they're doing is they're actually causing themselves a lot more grief. They're building up credit card debt. They're, mm -hmm. they're digging a hole that they're never going to get out of. They're eventually going to have to sell. And the market could be much worse in a year or two when they decide that they have to sell at that point, right? Yeah, All because they didn't just humble themselves and go out there and, you know, put boots on the ground, work a 10 or 12 hour day or, or whatever it is. If you're working eight, now you got to work 12. Yeah. If you're yeah. doing 10, you know, maybe 13, whatever it is, you need to be able to find a way to be able to generate extra income, you know, so, craft so dinner every day. Not yeah. being embarrassed, sitting at home, not being embarrassed, it isn't going to pay the bill. No, so, no. So, so, so do you like uh, when people get into the car, you, you drive people around no. too, or is it just Uber no. Eats? Just Uber Eats. Oh, just okay. Eats. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah, I just I just do that for now. And then, uh, like I said, I have, I have two people I'm working with on the real estate side and on the Uber Eats side, I'm just handing my cards out left and right. And, you know, I haven't had one, like, I just started when you seen that TikTok video I did, you just seen like I just started doing it a couple of days. So I've been doing it ever since, but I mean for a couple of weeks now. And yeah, I haven't had one person yet like negative like you know, say to my no, what are you doing? Solicitation. I don't want that. Da -da -da. Yeah. It's all they're hungry. Yeah, they're but hungry. now yeah. it's gonna like fold in on itself. It's gonna be like, oh, I hope I get the guy. And people are yeah. gonna start filming you come to the door, and it's gonna like they're gonna mesh the TikToks together. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna yeah. be. You're gonna this be could famous. be a genius That's, move, man. And this you know it. what? And and honest to God, like I, I never intended for get any... an endorsement from Uber. Yeah, <laughs> I don't intend it for this for anything. Like, I just do my thing, get my name out there, this and that. And do you, does any nobody ever intends for something to go five hundred thousand views? Like it just, unless you're a pro and you know what you're doing like that. I just put out videos to try and locally get my name out there and see people gain followers, all that. And then this happens, and now I'm on your great show, and I'm just hoping that's that the big league. Crazy. This is the big league, right? This is basically as good as it gets from here. Okay. Now four more now, people might. See anybody your moving video. to Manitoba, get in touch with Ryan. All right. If you, if even if you're thinking about moving, like 
three blocks away from where you are right now in Vancouver or Toronto or Calgary, I think you should consider Manitoba and call Ryan. Thank you. Yes, definitely. Give you me got investment experience too. So if you're an investor and you're looking for properties that are going to be good investments, give yeah. Ryan a shout. So that way you, you must know, know the whole town by a couple now. more clients with all yeah. the deliveries too. So are you like making notes as you're driving around going like, this would be good for this guy, or this would be a good idea for this. What's going on all day? Yeah, here I'll just tell you. I'll just tell you another little thing. I um, there's a pizza joint just down the my block here, and every once in a while, you know, I'll grab a pizza from them, right? So once I got my cards, um, and I and I got my license, I went down there and I talked to the owner and I just said, "Hey, man," I said, "Do you mind if I give you a couple of cards for your friends and family, like just in case, you know, whatever?" And then he goes, "I'll do you one better." He goes, "Why don't you put them out here by the cash register?" He goes, "Get a little Is card." That good? Is that good? Is that a good placement? Well, yeah, it's just, I figured, you know what, people come in there, it's in, it's in my local, like it's a block away. So I live in this area. So they come in there, get their pizza, they see a realtor. And if any one of them thinks that they need a realtor or whatever, my card's right there. So it's just another little add on to get my name out there. What? So, okay. Let me just clarify something. So in Toronto, we have um, 75,000 agents licensed in Toronto out of all the working people. One in 56 are realtors. Wow. Okay. It's a crazy number. <laughs> it's much less competitive in Manitoba yeah. for the population than it is. Yeah. And so putting your cards at a desk in Toronto is not going to be very uh, effective because no, there's going to be like another five business cards sitting there already. You have but a the better relationship- chance of walking or getting called for a realtor's house than a friend's from high school's house here. Yeah, like definitely for an so, order, right? <laughs> yeah, but basically everybody I run into is a realtor. Yeah. Now let's just let's just make sure that you understand this. And I'm, I'm trying to talk to the people who are listening, the young realtors who are going to try to go out and do the same thing. The biggest thing you could be doing is what you said was making those relationships with the business owners. Mm. I have a lot of clients that are business owners. I've supported their businesses over the years for like personal use. And when it comes time, because they remember me as being that loyal customer, the guy who's always, you know, there talking, yeah. dressed well, talking about real estate. When it comes time for them or their their friends or family, whatever, for real estate, they come right. to me. I have yeah. a big, big network of that throughout the oh. years, just going from different businesses. Every type of business is a, is a potential customer. So you just yeah. being able to go in there, being friendly, letting the owner know, I'm a realtor, I'm doing this as well. I'm, uh, you know. Uh, giving my business cards out to people, that kind of stuff, and just establishing us. And then you're there every week or however many times you'd visit one particular restaurant is right. going to solidify that relationship. And those business owners are actually way better opportunities than yeah. even some of the people ordering food. Yeah, no, yeah. I agree. Because the, the, I did the same thing with the store, down, convenience store down the street. And that business owner took my cards and he says to me, I have a few friends that are looking for commercial spaces. Mm. Perfect. Right. So he said, if you know any jump into the commercial in the, space in the yeah. rural properties, he goes, but we're talking like he goes, it has to be a million plus, though. Like that's oh, tell them so, you don't sell anything under a million. So sorry. That's like yeah. we, we've got tell opportunity <laughs> costs on this side of the equation, too, sir. Yeah. yeah. You just let them know and say, well, that's good, because I don't do waste think my you're time with anybody dealing with for Christ's yeah. sakes here. Perfect. Right. We were, I was talking to Ryan Smitty Smith here. <laughs> I, I, I was talking to an agent yesterday. It's a $2 million listing that he's got. I got a buyer that we went to go check it out and we'll see what happens. But he said to me, he's like, oh, I remember when we were um, uh, just getting started. He's a little bit older than me, but he started in his 20s. And I started when I, I signed up when I was 19. So it was like back then it was $200,000, $250,000 houses. And this was like a great deal. You know, you're selling two, two all day long. You know, you're you're collecting a good a pay- paycheck. You sold a five hundred thousand dollar house. Holy smokes, that was a luxury property. You need to like, you know, celebrate, right? Yeah. Five hundred thousand dollar property, and now in Toronto, it's obviously like that's like the lowest end having a five hundred thousand dollar listing. And so in Manitoba, you know, cherish those two, three, four hundred thousand oh, sure. dollar sales. Those are amazing. You know, like yeah. I used to be so excited for them because, uh, you know, you don't you never want to be too busy or too whatever, you know, important to, to not help those people because what happens when they buy a $200,000 property from you is they sell it five years later for $300,000, right? $400,000, right? And now you got all these deals because you, you treated them really well, you know, well, it depends right. on where. So, so, yeah, so this is, oh, sorry, go on. no, go ahead. Sorry. No, no. I was just going to say like uh, what you were saying there about the realtors, like I, 
the thing with I found is that one of my clients I'm dealing with right now, she told me that she, this is her two realtors she went through. She like you like hired and the stuff she's telling me that they were not doing. I thought to myself, they must be seasoned realtors 20 years in or something because it seems very lazy to be mm, on. Good. You know? Like, I don't know. You should I'm see them here that. when they're all fat from all the <laughs> price increases. And the, you know, that I was just thinking really bad. Like the prices went so crazy here that just selling one house, you were like pretty well off in Toronto, depending on where you sold it. Right. Yeah. You didn't have to work any harder than you did two, three years earlier. You just had to sell another house, probably in the same neighborhood and the commission like double. Right. Yeah. I'm not kidding. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. So, so but and talking about inflation and more important, I think, to the world than your your Uber Eats video is I watched another one of your videos about the price of uh, two hash browns and a large <laughs> coffee. I'm not even kidding. I got like, you. Like, it's crazy. And then so, I mean, I, I, I was watching another video where this woman was talking about that inflation, for the most part, is really corporate profits, right? So, so, so those two ideas, plus you being on the show, I, I think they're very relevant because like a lot of people are doing a lot of stuff to like stay above water right now or thinking about stuff to do to stay above water. And why? Because like uh, Galen Weston wants to make more for his shareholders or all these, you know, all these profit centers that are just allowed to run amok right now as, you know, necessary i i don't know like why the hell does every shopping like why do we have to make 50 no. percent margins on groceries or whatever the hell we're making they could be half and i mean galen be okay his shareholders would still be okay but like all a lot of other people could be okay too right like isn't it crazy what would you say 850 for two hash browns and a coffee yeah. Bro, eight dollars and thirty-four cents exactly. When yeah. I was a kid, I paid a dollar twenty-five for a piece of pizza and a can of Coke. Okay, like I'm not that old. Like this yeah. is crazy. Eight fifty, like that hey, used to, used to go to Tim lucky. Hortons and feed three people for eight fifty, and that's just a few years ago. Like we'd go through the drive-through and get the two kids breakfast and a coffee, and that was probably like five <laughs> bucks or six bucks a few years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, no, that's it's you know what? That's the thing. It's pretty crazy. And I went there when I went there, I was like thinking to my I don't know, my brain was like, okay, I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna spend three, four bucks. I don't know what it was. And then they gave me the eight dollars and fifty cents. I was like, um, lucky I'm hungry. Cause then I, you know. Well, you were hilarious. You go, I don't like it, but I'm gonna <laughs> eat, eat it. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah, that's so a little, you know. We have we have those issues with a uh, higher cost of living right now. You know, I think in Manitoba, right? You've got you said one of the benefits of living in Manitoba is a lower cost of living. Are you just talking about housing? Hey, well, yeah, I, I probably I'm just focusing on real estate. Yeah, just the cost yeah. of living when it comes to a real estate. Yeah, because Everything you know what we're seeing in inflation numbers really is is affecting. Oh longer, yeah, but uh, across yeah. across the country. Right. Yeah, no, it's definitely, yeah, when it's uh, on others, when we're like talking about the groceries and the gas and all that stuff, like that's all still, mm -hmm. you know, it's still out of control, but I'm just, when it comes to the real estate, I just know by looking at some of the numbers throughout the provinces, like we're right at the top when it comes to like the lower cost of living, you know? Yeah. So because you because said of housing. And you guys are farmers, didn't you say? Like your family you grew up on a farm. Yeah, yeah so they still on a farm, yeah. So are they making a ton of money with all these no. people paying all this money for groceries? No, they're not. They're not farmers. Right. They're big farmers like that. We're kind of just, they're just like kind of like hobby farmers and few, few cattle. And like, they're not, it's hobby not like, they're big. yeah, like they just might be like my dad, my dad, right. He was a journeyman red seal um, steam fitter for 50 years. He's in his, he's almost 80 now. And he's been a farmer. He's been on that farm his whole life. So he's either had, 30 cows or he's had down to 10 cows, mm. seven cows. Like he always had something there because it's just something that was part of his life. Um, mm. And so, yeah, so they're not, no, they're definitely not rolling in anything. <laughs> we've got, we've got something going on right now in Ontario about removing the green belt. 
right? And this is something that's a big topic, right? Because we don't have enough places to build. Right. And yeah. and so they're just, they're removing parts of this protected land in order to build more houses. We won't get into that. Ontario's but full, it, like we're built up. Right. Well, where everyone wants places to move to, to is full, right? So in that's Manitoba, sweet. Winnipeg, how yeah. far outside of Winnipeg is your dad's farm? It's 35 minutes out. 35 that's minutes. And so close. surrounding Winnipeg is all farms. Oh, it's, you know what? Like there's, Winnipeg is a farm. Is Winnipeg there's a farm? No, no, it's a city. No. There's some <laughs> pictures of Winnipeg. <laughs> But yeah, but it's definitely on the outskirts of the city, right? It's expand. It's just going. It's just everywhere you go around the outskirts of the city, you see condos being built, houses, apartment buildings. Like the farmland is getting eaten up for sure. Okay, by so you're developers? experiencing by developers. No, yeah, development, residential. Or is develop it just people that want to be hobby farmers? No, no. Like these are like I'm seeing uh, condos, apartments. I think, to be honest, I've seen a lot more rental spaces are being built. Um, Purpose built rentals? Yeah. Like what? Right. Like six story buildings or four yeah. story walk up yeah, like buildings? Six story, like really? you know, a couple hundred units. Like they're huge. Like they're big. Really? Oh, how yeah. how uh, many stories is the condo that you're in right now? This is only three. This is only 12 units in this place. Okay. Yeah. And so, so are there more on. and more condos coming? Like to me, Manitoba doesn't have a lot of condos, but like I know nothing. Yeah, no, and that's what I'm saying is like you you see a lot more even right beside me here. I can see it right from my window. There's another big condo unit, probably um, 50, 60 units being built. Okay, so, so you think more as prices go up, condos are really um, uh, an affordable option, right? When they build condos, it's because they can give. Well, who's buying them? Are they investors? Better value for their for their for their money, right? The average condo is in Winnipeg is two uh, two fifty. Okay. So, but who's buying an end user or an investor? Are they being rented I, out after? Yeah, I think it's the oh, I, the, the one I'm I'm renting this condo right now. So from I'm from an investor from from uh, the person who owns it. Yeah, yeah. I imagine buy for two fifty. Crazy. I guess. Well, buy what's four. the uh, do you do you, do you mind telling us how much the rent is? Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. Wow. Any idea what Great. the guy paid for the condo? Yeah. It's, no it's idea. Weird. No, See? I don't know. For a whole condo. Yeah, why are investors not buying more places in Manitoba? TK, it's right? time for a road trip, go buddy. Buy, yeah, go and buy a place in Manitoba. You know, you get a great tenant. You get a great uh, newer build. You get a uh, great price. Maintenance fees are pretty reasonable. We need to go coast to coast with our show. We need an RV. Yeah. And, right? And a with couple a, of we weeks. Can, we can record it in the back. I'm not kidding. Right? Yeah, like uh, put it in the back and go Tim coast Poole. to coast. Tim Pool did that. Yeah, pretty this cool is a RV. Just so you know, this is a two bedroom, two Nobody bathroom, cares. eight hundred sure. square feet condo. Yeah, two nice. bedroom, two, two, two bathroom, bathroom? on street, fifteen hundred bucks. This is like palatial, and it's in an. It can't be a bad area. I mean, they're building more stuff oh. right beside them. No, it's, it's nice. a good area. It's a nice little area here. Yeah. Holy! Yeah. Cow. Our biggest it's issue, Ryan, is world. the um, construction um costs the the construction the getting the labor the the red tape behind getting the approvals done mm -hmm. um the timeline for for you know things to be able to get built and and the carrying costs that the developer has to be able to you know withstand in order to get it to that next spot what is it like in manitoba like the the place next door to you you know did you know anything about it like when they were starting to build then they're starting to sell do you have any idea of timelines no. How fast well, somebody could build a condo building? Well, I've been here. So it, that's been just over, well, it's been about a year. Mm -hmm. Because when I first moved here, it was two years ago. And then about a year ago, I started to see this place start to get going. And now it's at the point now where it's almost done. It's well, it looks done, but sold so out. To say within sold like, out. Oh, no, I don't know if it's sold out. Two I or just three years. Like, I just mean it's, it looks like it's up a building. It, yeah. So in a couple of years. Sense. We could do two that three too. Years TK. Makes sense. I know, but it and doesn't happen going. often. No. Two to three years don't make sense. That's all it should take. When you go and find a site and you say, all right, we're ready to build and this is what we're going to build and we got the money to do it. Three years later, that place should be built. Yeah. Right. But in Toronto for 10 years, they talk about what should be built and then yeah. they keep on changing what they're going to build. And then eventually the guy runs out of money and says, no, or, the, build anything or the policy changes and they go from 24 stories to 82 stories. Yeah. And then they spend another 10 years figuring that out. Right? Like, it's it's so crazy. crazy. Then they buy the neighbor and then they got to reapply now. Yeah. This is, this is pandemonium and it yeah. is true. But like, 
there isn't the same demand there. So like you don't want to even yeah. build maybe five stories in Manitoba sometimes because then you might be like selling forever, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's absorption, which actually Ryan, didn't you just do a video teaching about uh, absorption rates and stuff like that too? Yeah, I just, yeah, I just did like- in Good video. Rate, like the, the um, right now as the end of July, we were in a, it's on a seller's market balancing on a balance market like so let's say 3.5 months to get all the inventory sold we're at 3.1 so and that's a seller's market but so we're right on the verge of a seller's and the buyers or a, a balance market and a seller's market but i have i have people out there right now because like i said i'm looking for houses for people so i'm going through and i'm seeing a lot of uh in my area actually where because another thing i didn't mention in this video but you may have seen is like i incorporated door knocking into mm -hmm. my right into my uh, marketing uh, strategy. So I'll go and I'll pick an area and I picked an area where I did the research on it. And it's like, there was 30 sales done in this place in the last month. So there's a lot of action in and out of this community. I'm oh, sorry, of this neighborhood. So mm -hmm. I thought, Hey, if there's a lot of people are coming in and out, then obviously they're selling. So I went in there and I did the numbers and there was half of them. They were over list by 30, 40, 50, 60,000. And so it was a nice area. It's in my area that I live in here. And I was knocking on the doors, talking to people. And, and so I've incorporated that too. And now that I'm sh starting to show more houses, you know, it's hard to balance everything. That's why my Uber is getting in the way. That's <laughs> thank good problem you to for have. saying this. Thank God. Okay. I was getting a little nervous here. Okay. Listen no, to my, me, yeah, my, my friend. My hours are getting in the way here. Of course they are. Okay. The reality, I think, is that if you really want to be a good realtor, like you kind of got to focus on it 100 percent. OK, for sure. This is not financial advice. And I could be completely wrong. I hope your Uber driving gets in the way more and more and more soon. And your I think you're on the right path. From 12 to 10 to 8 to 6 to 4 to 3. Yep. You know? Start driving then... people in the car for Uber, for God's sakes, and have a conversation with them for half an hour if you're going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, well, they, there you go. That's another thing. It's, it's opened up to me because I have, with Uber Eats, I have the ability to kind of go onto that side too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then you got them captive. You got them hostage almost they have, to, they have to listen to me. you could put like video screens in the back and play like a ryan smith commercial pretty cool <laughs> can you do this tk Absolutely. actually i had lots of people years ago that. actually more, but we'll talk more, about that later you got a wrap more, on your car you need a wrap on your car no Depends I, what kind of driver you yeah can you I do just, that as we as we sit right now, my my car I drive is not a Uber type car. Let me just tell you that. Okay, mm -hmm. we're gonna get you that car though. That's Two thousand one right. Toyota Echo. Bro, you're one deal away from that car. One deal away from that one car. In Toronto, he's one deal car. away from that car. Well, <laughs> yeah, maybe you're a away few deals car. away there, but you're talking about million dollar uh, uh, commercial deals. Commercial right? property. Let's go get in the big leagues. Let's go. <laughs> See, this is amazing. I love and this. I told, and that's what I told. Uh, I'm telling everyone that like in, I'm in my circle too. I'm just saying, you know what? I'm a, two or three sales away from, like you said, uh, TK, about like just knocking it down from 10 to five. Right. And just let yeah. me drive a little bit. I just need to get that. Cause my, my whole thing is once I get hundred percent focused on being a realtor, like it's, I'm going to go like, it's going to be the yeah. effort I'm putting into doing all this side stuff is going to be all going into my real estate career. I, I've seen a lot of people start and I'll tell yeah. you, you got what it takes. You're doing what's necessary. Yeah. And you're going to work hard until you reach your goals. That's all it is. This is not rocket science. No, no but then you got to keep this going. Is, you but you have to keep going. Your goals. Yeah. And you yeah. got to focus on, you know, you're going to have people who you're going to be working on your business, which is going to be, um, you know, getting new clients, following up with clients, reaching more people, yeah. putting out your business cards, door knocking, all those type of stuff. And then you're going to be working uh, in your business, which is going to be showing houses, writing up contracts, doing research for clients. You have but to lean sure into the you Uber don't, thing. You don't get caught up in this. Is what every myself included, every agent gets caught up. You get all these clients. You start working in your business. You don't work on your business. Then right. you sell everybody a house. You do such yeah. a great job. You find everyone a home. You sell their home. You're amazing. And then guess what? You forgot to add more clients to your pipeline. Right. And then you got to start all over again. And then you got to move along with them. Move along, yeah. move along. Oh, okay. I got a bunch more clients. I thought you were going <laughs> to go down the stairs there, TK. You were going to go down the stairs I was on a motivator there. Uh, 
And so what you need to do <laughs> is you need to, you need to figure out a really good steady prospecting method so sure. that you can be constantly getting new clients. And you know what you need to do is you need to start yeah. tar targeting sellers. Yeah. You need to start tar yeah. targeting sellers. Don't, don't just because you just started think that you're a buyer agent only. Don't have that mindset. You're, an, you're a real estate agent. You help people. You help people buy, you help people sell. And that yeah. if someone needs to sell their home, you're the best guy for the job and you'll figure it out. It's not that hard. No, no. Listen, you have the hard. perfect cross find promotion. Someone at the office to help you get things done the right way so you can but get it. So help those businesses that you know with your TikTok, right? Videos while doing the Uber thing and you're a grand slam and you don't have to do Uber for 10 hours a day to do that. Yeah right? Mm -hmm. Do it in your two hours of Uber a day. Be the Uber guy because it's a wonderful shtick and people Huge, will love stick. it. It's yeah, so don't give great. That up. Lean Keep that as a brand. This, and it yeah. is beautiful. And then, and such and a then great when story. you're driving, when he's driving the Mercedes and he's yeah. still delivering Uber Eats, people are going to, you're going to get 10 million views. Absolutely. So you have no idea what you that's no going to do when you yeah. get to that level of success. Yeah. And we have to have you're still doing this really humble yeah, uh, you know, prospecting method that it got you to where you are, yeah. man, they're going to eat that hey, up. This is amazing. Right now, I've had, a, I've had some people right now say to me, you know what, do you ever think of maybe what you're driving, right? Like you're going to pull up to a listing, you're going to pull up to a customer, this or that client, and you're driving, you know, is going to take a Lambo, bro. Right? Just a like, nice Mercedes. When, when, they say, when they say that, I, I, I just tell them, I say, you know what? That car isn't what's walking into that house selling that place. No, no, no. Forget that nonsense. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. Let's be real. That's bullshit. Anybody thinks that the car is important. I'm sorry. That's just the truth. So so forget about that. I, I sold. So my first car in real estate, I bought a $2,500, 2000 Chrysler Town and Country minivan. It was leather seats. It had no heat. I would drive around. No, no air uh, conditioning. AC, no AC. I would drive around in the summer with cold bottles would of blow water. blow on people. Cooler. So that I would give them a cold bottle of water because we'd be sweating buckets in the middle of summer on the leather suites, yeah. on the leather seats. Okay. And I drove that car until I burned out the engine. Then I replaced the engine with a $600 Dodge Caravan engine. Smart. And I drove that car for two years and I made a decent amount of money, especially for a young guy. I made yeah. a decent amount more money than I ever made. And then I realized at that moment that I needed a better car, a but better car. I still made a living for myself and built myself up without having to you can do it. go There's and no get a lease or finance. I never did that stuff. Yeah. You can find a way to be able to make sure that you have um, everything in place and you just work. You your, can work do your it. Oh yeah. You can do it, but don't think that people aren't thinking that the car matters. Okay. Cause it does, even if you're the best yeah. in the world. So yeah. like, Get a few sales, get a nice car, keep being the Uber guy. This is the best marketing ploy yep. of yep. all time. I made you onto the Canadian real estate That's show. That's right. I'm, no, but the number this one shit. podcast. It's true, though. In the universe. Out of yeah, all it podcasts. really is true. And you know okay. who voted on that? Who? Me? Vaz. Vaz. No. Vaz. Nice. Vaz unanimously voted that this is the best podcast on earth. <laughs> there you he go. He told me. He has the best podcast on earth. It's true. There you go. There we got a clip. Got, now you got the Ryan. Ryan, I got the Uber driver realtor telling you that. There you go. I love it. I love Can it. you ask everybody to commercial. subscribe to our channel, please? Absolutely. Subscribe to this channel. As soon as you're done watching this video, hit the subscribe button. Yeah, and if you're That's like you uh, super aggressive, like just do it now. Don't wait till the end. <laughs> or do it now. Yeah. Or do it now. There's no better time than now. I found this. This saying, TK, that I love. I put it in my calendar to read every yeah. day. Yeah. One day or day one, it's mm. your choice. I like That's it. Right. I love it. And you know what? Even if you do a lot of shit every day and you start a lot of th stuff and you think that like you just can't handle more, there's still one more thing that can get added onto that list, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. As long as you keep moving forward, right? You know what TK is going to add on his list this weekend? A championship belt in Vegas, bro. I wish I was going. I said to Kayla, I go, let's just go to Vegas and watch watch TK's thing. Let's do it. I, I'm not even kidding. Yeah, what do you I need some. Uh... It's a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu tournament. He's in the uh, WWE. He's and they a... don't give out belts, but they do give out medals. And uh, oh, yeah, damn, going no down belts? to Vegas tonight. Awesome. Good luck, brother. Thank you very yeah. much. Good luck. It. They don't give out belts to the guy who wins the tournament? No, they give out medals.
Medals. Well, yeah. if you win this tournament, I'm gonna buy you a belt. I'm gonna just buy a belt. I'm gonna buy you I'm a gonna, belt. Well, I don't even have to win. I'm just gonna buy a belt. Just to I hope I it. get. I hope I see a picture on Instagram of you on that top uh, podium. I mean, me too. I I hope I see that picture. We see it throughout the year, but I guess this is the big one. This is the big one. This is the big yeah. one. Good luck. Well, Mister Mister Smitty, Mister Smith, Ryan, the Uber driver. You got it. Uber Realtor. Sorry, I'm Uber sorry. Realtor. I didn't mean to uh, mis mis mispronounce your your new name. <laughs> but uh it was a pleasure to meet you i wish you all the success in the world i'm glad i got to see that video and uh we hope... want to get you back on the show when yeah, let's you've get an made update. Some sales <laughs> and you've got a good you know following and you've built up your social media presence and uh prove all the naysayers wrong that's right i'll come back in a heartbeat thank you that awesome. would be so great awesome well everybody another great week tk and... adios muchacho we did well we did it again, again. Hey, guys. Look at us.